بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, sisters and brothers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته first of all I want to wish you a happy Eid and a happy new Islamic year which is coming in a few weeks insha'Allah uh, it's a pleasure to be with you in this uh, program uh, alhamdulillah despite the lockdown and the corona uh, technology is giving us the opportunity to be together uh, and to connect uh, our speaker professor hidabi is in malaysia i i the moderator i'm in riyadh and you the participants are in the caribbean in the indian ocean many different areas of the world alhamdulillah so technology is bringing us together our speaker today is Professor Daoud Al Hidabi. Uh, he is a scientist, an educator. He established and led a very successful University of Science and Technology. And he has to his credit a lot of uh, publications and supervision of students doing masters and doing uh, a PhD. And he also has been involved in editing academic journals. Uh, currently, he is a professor at the International Islamic University in Malaysia. His expertise in education and personal development, and today he will be talking to us about uh, akhlaq-based leadership, that is leadership based on uh, ethics. So, Professor Daoud, tafadl mashkuran. Just allow me for sharing. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Eid Mubarak to you all. And I hope that the coming year, Hijra year, will be a year of success, insha'Allah, and leadership. Today we are tackling one of the most important issues in our life, that is leadership. And you might ask me why I emphasize and focused on ethical leadership. And I would say akhlaq leadership because the concept of akhlaq is a bit different from the concept of ethics in English. One of the reasons for um, discussing akhlaq leadership, first we have to go back to our sources of revelation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِدْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Indeed, I was sent to perfect good manners. مكارم الأخلاق So in a way, Islam is an ethical religion, ethical deen. That's why I am saying that and advocate that akhlaq is a bit different from the concept of ethics. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned the story of Musa, he said, the girl said to her father, the best you can hire is the strongest and the trustworthy. She justified her request from her father by discussing and explaining two competencies that is the strength and trustworthiness so we are looking for somebody or a leader who is strong and at the same time is a trustworthy he's an ethical person 
and another ayah Yusuf alayhi salam when he talked to the ruler of Egypt and he asked to be in charge of the land storehouses he said inni hafizun alim ij'alni ala khaza'in al-ard inni hafizun alim indeed i am a trustworthy and knowledgeable again during the time of sulaiman the prophet sulaiman the jinn said to him about transferring the throne from Yemen to uh, Sham, he said, Inni alayhi laqawiyyun ameen. Indeed, I am for this task strong and trustworthy. You can see that the common concepts across all these hadith and ayah is trustworthiness. It is talking about a club. So if we are looking for leaders, the most important core competency is akhlaq. This is what revelation stated to us. But also we can look Look at the Western companies and Western leaders of companies, how they failed and they announced bankruptcy as the result of unethical practices. Enron, one of the biggest energy, with an American company, its asset was six. 65.5 billion dollar and has 22,000 employees announced bankruptcy in 2001. WorldCom announced bankruptcy in 2002. It asset was one th uh, 107 billion dollars. Lehman Brothers, we still remember when it announced the failure, it has an asset of $680 billion and 126,000 staff. And all the common thing among all those companies, failure and bankruptcy, was unethical practices. Despite professionality, good competency, Good regulation, good bylaws, and everything. But it failed. They all failed. Now, after just pointing out the importance of akhlaq in the leadership of any organization, be private, public, or non government for non profit organization let us start define the two concepts the first concept is the akhlaq leader the ethical leader what do we mean by akhlaq leader now the concept the islamic concept of akhlaq leader might have some common characteristic with what we get in the literature but also we have our own unique characters. First, the leader, the ethical leader, he must be a qudwa, committed to akhlaq karima, to good manners, in his or her private, public, or professional life. So that's why Aisha radiallahu anha when she explained about the Prophet, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Quran. His good manners were Qur'an. So he was a moving Qur'an. 
a Quran in action. So we are looking for people who are exemplary in their actions, whether private, public, or professional. That's why I say the concept of akhlaq is a bit different. It's not just values in the head which drive you to do something good or bad, but also it's a commitment and an action person which he reflect or he ref she reflects the whole Islam and professionality together in their lives. Also, that is in fact the core of the matter, the Qudwa. Second, inspire and motivate, influences and convince followers. So the followers should follow him or her, should follow the instruction he's giving to his followers or to his team members. Three, engage his followers to achieve worthy, ethically accepted and shared goals. Now, ethics is going through the personality, the action, and the objective the team members adhere to. Also, he is empowering the team members to achieve this ethically accepted, worthy, and shared goal. And finally, brings benefits. He or she shows impact in the real life for all stakeholders and protect them from harm, which is the core of al kulliyat al khams is trying to achieve benefits and protect stakeholders from harm. And that's again not only Qudwa, not only inspire and engage people, not with clear vision and mission and worthy and ethically accepted goals, but also they reach an impact. They make an impact in the real life. That is the ethical leader. Now, when we talk about the word influence or persuade one of the key characteristic of a leader is to make people work together as a result of delivering the leader's instructions or goals and that boils down to the impact or the influence of the leader on others Well, in order to influence others, you have to bear in mind that others or team members or followers, they have first to admire your personality and the way you act. And that is, cannot be achieved unless you are Qudwa. Once you are Qudwa, then people will appreciate and admire what you do, what you say, how do you behave, not only in the organization, but also in your personal life. Second, this admiration should lead to trust. So, followers, Team members, staff, employees, they should trust you. If they don't trust you, they cannot follow you. And trust is a very important 
says before obedience of instruction and if they trust you as a leader then they will love you because once you trust somebody you disclose your fear your concerns to your leader you don't feel there are barriers between you and the leader and this love it is for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not for gaining personal interest and once you love a person then you internalize all his thoughts feelings ideas instructions belief system and once you internalize you act accordingly and if you act accordingly then in this case you follow and you are influenced by the leader then we can ensure the achievement of the common goals and interest of the organization that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said qul in kuntum tuhibbun allah fattabi'uni yuhibbukum allah obedience is connected to love oh muhammad say if you love allah then follow me allah will love you so obedience is related to love so we have to check ourselves to what extent people loving us they admire what we do they trust us they love us and they internalize everything and they act with love they act with love if the relationship between the leader and the followers is based on love of allah then the leader will influence and be followed by his or her followers now let us move to the definition of akhlaq which i would like to elaborate a little bit about the difference between the concept of akhlaq and the concept of ethics First, akhlaq is the ethical leader's way of life. That's why Aisha radiyallahu anha said, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ His ethics were al-Qurawaz al-Qur'an. He was committed and practicing Qur'an. That was his akhlaq. So, in a way, akhlaq is you. your way of life all in salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya lillahi rabbil alamin so the whole life is for allah and that is your khulq which is based on the leader set of muslim beliefs and decisions and manifested in the leader's good habitual body language you know like face expression whatever sayings and action these good habitual behavior are performed without reflection or hesitation it's already you, you it goes beyond thinking you have already internalized it and you are acting on the basis of this belief system so in this case ethics or akhlaq is different from the connotation of ethics ethics in islam is universal across time and context but in the western literature with the new philosophy new liberalism ethics is relative and personal so we have to cultivate akhlaq in our potential leaders 
so that they can manifest them in their own way of life. And that's a completely different personality definition. Now, let me say, how can we form this kind of way of life, habitual actions, how can we form them? We either form a new khuluq, like to be generous, or to perform salah on time, or to say the truth at any time. All these kind of khlaq, habitual thing. You don't intend to do it, you just do it because you believe in it. Or you want to replace a bad habit. A bad, a bad akhlaq, a bad ethics, with a good one. So, either you want to commit to a new khuluq, or to replace a bad khuluq with a new khuluq. What is the process of doing it? Well, for those who are helping and facilitating the formation of akhlaq, with our young generation or they want themselves to form their akhlaq or change their habits first they have to awaken so the awakening is the first stage towards formation or change to be awakened is to realize the importance of this khuluq as a good one with dedication to either form it or change it. So awakening is very important. To realize that it is, it had to be changed or it had to be formed. The second stage is thinking. And when you talk about thinking focus, we talk about Focusing on this khuluq to be formed and be practiced as a way of life. Then you make the real niya, qasd, intention, with a willpower, with commitment, with dedication to act on your belief system. And once you have this niya and willpower, then you go and practice and act it. And once you are acting on the basis of your niya, then you repeat this habit. If you pray not on time, you pray the first time on time, the second time on time, and it becomes a way of life, habitual practice. Then it becomes a khuluq. Sagiya or Tab'a. Tab'a is a way of life. That is the khuluq. And this is the kind of leaders we are looking for. What are the strategies of cultivating this way of life? Well, very broadly, number one is modeling. It is part of our nature as human beings. We tend to imitate and emulate whom we love. Whom we love. Whom we trust. So we have to provide for people role, role, role model, leading example, exemplary people. They can see and they can emulate and imitate. So we want to learn through action, not just lectures. So it, it, you, you perceive it as a real, a realistic, realistic leadership. Second is by sohba. Sohba is to accompany a mentor. Somebody you think that he or she is a good mentor to follow. 
So you can ask and consult and seek advice. By being with them, you learn through action again. Number three is encouraging people, those potential leaders, to get engaged and deliver community-based services or social services or action-based projects and activities. Again, you are learning leadership through experience, through hands-on activities. So all these three strategies are based on doing things through practice, either by observation or doing. Number four is reading the leaders' biographies. And we have to go and read the Sira again with the view in mind to learn from the practices and the way the Prophet behaved and acted as a leader. Although the caliphs, the five caliphs, including Umar bin Abdul Aziz, and also across the board, there are a lot of Muslim and non-Muslim who showed good leadership skills and behavior. Maybe reading and learning through their biographies might be of help for those who are interested to be leaders. And finally, is what we do and practice is education and training. But believe me, education and, tra and training are not enough, not sufficient to acquire the characteristics of a leader, particularly a Muslim leader, an ethical or akhlaqi leader. And the last component of my presentation would be about something I have developed as a model for the leader's personalities, which consists of six components. I have driven these components from revelation and human acquired knowledge in the world. And anyone look at it, he or she can understand that they were driven from both sources, revelation and experience. When I say experience, I'm talking about research and about knowledge generated by Muslims and non-Muslims. But the framework is our revelation. So to me, the most important co uh, component of a leader personality is the heart. Is the heart. Al-Qalb. Ala wa inna fil jasad mudga. Ida saluhat saluha sa'iru al-jasad. Wa ida fasadat fasada sa'iru al-jasad. That was the Prophet stated clearly and plainly that there is an organ in the body. If it was sound, the whole body will be sound. And if it is not sound, the whole body will never be sound. And we mean by the heart, the place of Iman. The place of truth and falsehood. Right or wrong. Love or hatred. Is a place where we think and we reflect. So as a result, the heart is a place for beliefs, passion, feelings, emotion, as well as thinking. So it's the most important. That's why our scholars they used to say, the heart is the king or the ruler and the whole body organs are soldiers. They just follow the orders of the heart. That is 
of love and hate as well as and belief as well as thinking so in order to check a leader's personality we have to check heart and if we want to develop potential leaders we have to deal with the heart with iman with tazkiyah purification with worship with commitment to islam with freedom from being a slave of anybody in the world to be slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no fear from anyone but fear from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looking for no reward but from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looking to the hereafter that's the kind of heart we are looking for so the leader has to have that kind of living heart with iman ibada tazkiyah as well as worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing everything with pure sincerity and good intention for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in, in order to have say a training program based on action and knowledge we have to focus more on the heart first developing the heart the good muslim heart leader number two is the mind and as i said in islam heart is linked to thinking and it is in charge of thinking but i have put the mind so that we can develop thinking for practical purposes in quran there is no mention of the word aql but there are derivatives of aql yaqilun yatafakkarun yatadabbarun so al quran has more than 500 derivatives of thinking but in the form of verbs present verbs so the verb it means that it is an activities allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the most important part of tafkir or thinking is to do it to do it you have to think criticize analyze reflect and so on but in action not just talking about it as aql but as verb as something related to reality so again we want to develop the thinking through action based activities rather than reading books reading should not be more important or enough for training the thinking of a leader but give him verses to reflect give him task to do in the field so something to be done in order to develop thinking then akhlaq which i have already talked about it it's your way of life if the heart sound if the mind sound then your way of life is sound the whole action are, uh, is sound so akhlaq is the good way of translating and reflecting the heart and the mind functions then we can talk about traits and competencies which we generate a lot from revelation and experience and in terms of traits that is related to the personality traits there are personal traits and social traits we will talk about it a little bit later competencies as well this is the knowledge and skills related to the profession if you are working 
as an imam of the mosque you have to have the skills of imam and the knowledge of imam if you are a principal of a school you have to have the knowledge and skills of head teacher or a principal of a school if you are a head of department or a dean or what have you then you have to have competencies related to that field knowledge and also skills but also the knowledge of the context the local context the global context this is in here in the competencies and the last one is as i said at the beginning in the definition of akhlaq leader is the impact the result the outcome so at the end of the day we would like to see the fruits the outcome of this leadership in terms of benefits realized or harms were prevented we protected people from harm or we brought to them fruits and benefit if there is a leader but there is no benefit doctor al waqt okay now let us just give you some example of traits like taqwa like commitment to islam as a way of life like humbleness integrity forgiveness kindness enthusiasm patience optimism does not make false promises this is some of the personal social traits with regard to competencies there are some example like competent in relevant professional leadership knowledge and skills inspires influences motivate others visionary develops followers and pro, uh, promote ethics among them understand internal external context love others and loved by others delegates authority effective communicator focus on change and transformation wise in his or her leadership the right decision action and impact and that i think i have come to the end of my presentation and sorry to be a bit long thank you and may allah bless you thank you very much Professor Daoud, for this very thoughtful and inspiring talk. <laughs>